Hello Anglophonians and welcome to another episode where we take a look at the European comic culture. And this time it's Nick Nadatone's turn again. And we nearly could do a crossover between Nick Nadatone and Lucky Luke. But of course it wasn't. Um, Nick Nadatone was created in Germany and Lucky Luke in Belgium. But for this story Nick Nadatone is traveling to the wild wild west. The story is called The Gold Wayne of Bloody Corner. The Gold Vein of Bloody Corner was the third adventure with Nick Knatterton. The comic artist Manfred Schmidt wanted to quit for a long time, but success and his publisher forced him to do another comic. And although the magazine Quick, in which the comics appeared, was a so-called man's magazine, you know what I mean. The detective with the unusual appearance was a great success. The story begins with a rich couple's cry for help. Their son Billy Rilkratz Jr. has disappeared. When Nick Natterton searches his room, he finds a newspaper with an advertisement that says one can participate financially in the greatest gold mine of all times. Nick Natterton realizes that this is exactly what Billy wants and begins his journey to a town called Killville in the Wild West. The story gives Manfred Schmidt the opportunity to draw out all the cliches about Americans. There are gangsters everywhere who never miss an opportunity to use one of their numerous guns. We also see for the first time a legendary punch from Nick Nadaton, with which he takes out four opponents at once. He jumps up and knocks out the four people with all four limbs at the same time. Of course, Nick finds out that the gold mine story is a scam. He rents a room from farmer's daughter Priscilla Cornflakes and learns some very strange American customs, such as the fact that romantically inclined neighbors put out the candles on Priscilla's Christmas tree by shooting at the flames. Yes. After some problems, Nick is finally able to find Billy Rilkratz Jr. and convince him to help uncover the gold mining fraud. The story ultimately finds an unusual happy ending in which not only do the villains end up in prison, but the image of the town of Killville is fundamentally changed. Then of course Priscilla Cornflakes wants to marry Nick, but what a stroke of luck! In the last panel, a telegram arrives with a new case for the master detective. And contrary to Manfred Schmidt's wishes, the story continues. Once again, this comic is a piece of contemporary history. Manfred Schmidt tries to satirically undermine the chauvinistic image of women in the 1950s in the Federal Republic of Germany. For example, by presenting Priscilla Cornflakes as a very independent woman who does not have to be saved constantly. Elsewhere, however, he fully indulges in chauvinism by, for example, clearly pointing out that a crook lady's breasts shake because she's so angry. One must not forget that the emancipatory progress that had been achieved in the Weimar Republic in the 1920s was destroyed by the Nazis between 1933 and 1945 and the sexual revolution of the 1960s and the 1970s was still to come. At the same time, there are an incredible number of allusions to politics that were current at the time the comic was published and that cannot always be understood today. During the course of the story, for example, Nick Knatterton meets a Native American chief named Old Fox of the Great Chocolate Mountain. When we look at the panel, we recognize a caricature of the then Chancellor of West Germany, Konrad Adenauer. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find out what Manfred Schmidt is referring to with the name Old Fox from the Big Chocolate Mountain. One thing is clear, Manfred Schmidt did not agree with Adenauer's politics. 
because you can find many allusions to things that were discussed at the time and in a negative way. For example, when Nick is hit by a car, he says, I'm playing popular opinion today, they'll just run me over. When he is thrown into a barrel without a bottom that hides the entrance to a secret cellar, he says, I did use a typical rearmament barrel. A bottomless barrel is a German idiom that describes something that is becoming ever more expensive and will consume more and more money, just as a bottomless barrel will never be full. The rearmament of Germany, which Adenauer promoted, was seen by its critics as a bottomless barrel, because it was impossible to foresee what cost the creation of a new German army would entail. But it's not just politics that Manfred Schmidt satirizes. We've already seen the cliches about Americans, and literary criticism is even practiced in the first panel of the story. There's a bookshelf in Billy Rilgratz Jr.'s room. As Manfred Schmidt points out, the bookshelf contains 279 different Wild West novels with the same content. If Nick Knatterton's parody of superhero comics didn't work out the way Schmidt wanted, he could at least rail against so-called pulp novels. The last panel of the story actually leads seamlessly into the next, which begins with the contents of the mysterious telegram. But that is another story and will be told another time. So there you have it, the gold vein of Bloody Corner. Oh, that sounds, um, sounds like, like, uh, uh, something. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Next time we take another look at the Europa Park. And until then, take good care of yourself and see you.